In this video, we'll be installing brakes on this 2007 Mazda CX-9. It'll be the same process for the first generation from 2007 to 2015. And now we can remove our wheel. It's going to be a 21 millimeter. We'll go ahead and take off our lug nuts now. So we're going to start off by removing our caliper bolts. We have two, top and bottom, and they're going to be two 17 millimeters. All right, so we're not going to take this bolt out fully. Before we do that, we'll go to the top. All right, now that we're here, we can remove both of our bolts. Now at this point, you're going to want to have some sort of hanger for your caliper. We're going to want to hang that probably on our strut or somewhere out of the way that's not causing any stress to the actual brake hose. Here you go, here's our caliper pin slash bolt. We can remove the bottom. Now from here, we're going to want to slide our caliper off of our brake pads. Sometimes you may need to come in through the top or the bottom with a flathead screwdriver or a small pry bar and work this off, but this is coming out okay. We'll slide this right off. We'll take our hanger, put it through the bolt hole location, and we'll hang this up on the spring of the strut. Now this hose is bent a little bit further than I would like, so we might drop it down just a little more and ease that bend. Now with our caliper out of the way, we can go ahead and take out our brake pads. And now from here, our caliper bracket's going to come off so we can get to our rotor. So our two caliper bracket bolts here, they're gonna be 19 millimeter. Okay. So now that we've broken both of our caliper bracket bolts free, we can go ahead and take out the bottom one. Now, I like to leave one of them at least in three quarters of the way before I start to get the other one most of the way out. Just kind of holds the bracket in place a little bit more for you. Once you get to this position, go ahead and just take one of them out all the way. All right, on the bottom bracket bolt is the only thing holding in your caliper bracket. So go ahead and keep one hand on the bracket while you re remove the last bolt. Once you have that bolt out, and slide your caliper bracket right out. Now that you have your caliper bracket removed, you should have two Phillips screws in these countersunk spots here. Our vehicle doesn't have them, but now you would be taking those Phillips screws out. Once you get those Phillips screws out, you should be able to give your rotor a couple of taps and slide that rotor straight off. All right, so now we're gonna clean up our hub surface here. Now this hub surface is extremely clean, but I'm gonna hit it with some brake clean and get rid of the greases. Give it a little, a little dry. Now if your hub surface was old or corroded, this is where you'd wanna come in here with either a wire brush or a small abrasion disc and clean up in between your lugs here. You want this surface to be as flat and as smooth as possible. What you do not want to do is grind this as flat as possible. You don't want to remove material. 
You just want to get rid of the old corrosion that happens to be on there, if there is any. Now for us, this is extremely clean. It's now free of any greases and oils. What we're going to do is put some anti-seize on this surface. Now because we're going to use anti-seize in an aerosol form, I'm just going to cover up the areas it does not need to be on. Just give it a nice light coat. Now if you did get a little bit of overspray like we did down the bottom here, not a huge deal. You can come back and wipe it up. Mainly you don't want this to be anywhere where your stopping is going to happen. You don't want to get it on the inside of your brake pads or anything like that. So a little overspray on the backing plate is okay. We'll let this dry up and then we'll put our rotor on. So what we're going to do now is take our new front rotor and we're going to put it on backwards. Then we're going to take some brake clean and we're going to clean the surface here where our pads are going to meet. We're going to get rid of any shipping, greases or oils that still remain. What you can do is come in here with the rag. And if you decide to, you can go ahead and put a lug nut on here which will stop this from moving if it does move on you and it makes you feel a little bit safer. Go ahead and put a lug nut on there while you do this step. Once you're done with this step, we're going to make sure our hands are clean. We're going to take our rotor, flip it around, line up our Phillips screw holes. All right, so we have our Phillips screw holes lined up. At this point, what I would suggest is put your two Phillips screws in now, because it's going to hold your rotor in place from moving around a little bit. Unfortunately, we don't have our screws. Our vehicle didn't come with them. So we're going to work with it moving around a little bit. Once you have your two screws in, we're going to take some brake clean again, and we're going to clean off the surface where our pads are going to meet. Give that a wipe. Now that rotor surface here, you're going to want to keep clean and free of any greases or oils. If you get any greases or oils on here again, you're going to want to clean it with some brake clean. Once you get that done, your next step is going to be your brake caliper bracket. So now we have our caliper bracket set up on the bench. We're going to need to clean our caliper bracket and replace some brake hardware. So first thing we're going to do, actually first thing you're going to notice, is one of the boots is out. This boot is actually the not, not the right boot for this caliper bracket. So that one just wants to continue to fall out, so we're just going to leave that out. So you'll notice our other boot comes all the way through our caliper bracket and out the other side. So you won't be able to remove this boot unless you want to take it all the way out. We're not going to do that. What we are going to do is flush out both areas with some brake clean. We're going to try and get some of that old grease out of there. Get as much as we can out. All right, we're going to do that to both sides. Now at this point, if you had a bore brush or some kind of cleaner that you can get down in there, and make sure you have all the residue out. That's a great idea. Now, typically with these, with the boots, you don't want to poke in them. So we're just going to squish it around and then flush it out. All right, we'll do the same thing on this boot here. This isn't the right boot for it, but we will be reusing it because we don't have anything else. Again, the reason for doing this is this car is a 2007. You can see that there's some lumps and chunks of grease, which means that some of that grease is probably from 2007. So we're going to remove all the old and put in fresh grease. If this caliper was fairly new and all this grease looked fantastic, 
You wouldn't necessarily need to flush it all out. You would just want to add some fresh grease. But to make sure we're starting nice and clean, we'll get rid of all the old stuff. All right, so that boot's pretty clean. Set that aside. So now that we've flushed out where our pins are gonna go, we're gonna let that drip dry and evaporate while we work on our metal hardware for our brake pads. So the hardware in this vehicle is in two pieces. So we're gonna pop out each side. You know, sometimes a small pocket screwdriver or a flathead. In this case, we're using a pick tool. So once we have our hardware popped out, what we're going to do is take a wire brush and we're going to clean in the area where our hardware sets. We're going to try and get rid of any loose corrosion or any grease build up in there. All right, so that looks pretty good. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Now at this point here, when you start to do this area, be careful of this rubber boot. You want to do your best not to poke holes or wear a hole in that with your wire brush. All right, so once we think we have these areas cleaned out enough, we're going to clean them up. Just a little bit of brake clean. Wipe those dry. That looks fairly good. Now once this area here is clean, we're going to take a little bit of grease and we're going to cover that area where the hardware is going to go. This is going to prevent moisture from getting in there and corroding underneath your hardware. It's also going to help with a little bit of squeaking if that may happen from your brakes. And once you're satisfied with the grease, we can take our new brake hardware and pop it right into position. Now you'll see on your brake hardware, there is an outside and there is an inside. All right, so just make sure you're putting them in the right place. Once you get them on the right side, go ahead, line them up, press them into position. If they will not press into position, you may actually need to go in and clean a little further, which would mean removing that grease and getting back in there with a wire brush. And you also have to remember sometimes in shipping, these tiny little tabs on these brackets do get bent or moved slightly. So you may just have to adjust them slightly to get into position. But if you really have to fight it, then you might want to make sure all the corrosion is gone on the inside. Do the same thing on the top or the other side. All right, once you have your hardware in place, what I like to do is take a rag, ball it up a little bit, and come back in the center here where your brake pads and rotor will be, and just clean that of any grease that might have gotten squished out. What that'll do is just stop that grease from transferring onto your rotor when we install the bracket. Okay, so as far as the bracket, we're done. We still have a small issue with our boot, but this boot is wrong for this vehicle. So we'll deal with this when we get to the vehicle. But our caliper bracket is done. We can set this aside. What we have now are our caliper pins. You can see a lot of old grease, a little bit of corrosion on them. We're going to clean these up and re-grease them. So we're going to use some brake clean. And what we're looking for here is a nice clean pin. 
with minimal corrosion if you can get it there. While we're here, we'll just clean up these threads. All right, now if you have any corrosion in this area here, you can take it to a wire wheel, or you can take a wire brush to it if you have one. These are actually in pretty good shape, so we'll set this one aside. We'll do the same thing on the other one. This one looks to be a little bit worse. So the pin itself looks pretty good. Just right in here on the shoulder, looks a little corroded. So we'll take a wire brush, just spend a minute on there, all the way around. So we're done with that, just give it a little clean. Okay, now one of the reasons we want to spend some time on that, that ribbed area right there is that's where the boot will actually sit. So the boot's going to come up and pop over this ledge. That ledge with the little grease is what's going to stop corrosion from moisture from getting in here and freezing these pins. So we want that area to be nice and smooth as well. Now that we have two cleaned pins, we'll go ahead and grease these. We're going to use a light coat of grease all the way from that rib down. All right, so this isn't a step where more is better. Too much grease can actually hydrolock and freeze the pins in their respective slides. So a nice light coat is all you need. A little dab at the bottom. Set this aside. Do the same on the other. All right, with our two pins greased, we're ready to reassemble. All right, so now we're going to take our greased pins. We're going to put them into their areas here. Now remember, this is the wrong boot for this caliper, but we don't have another, and we're going to use it. So we're going to put it in place, and we're going to press our pin all the way down into position. What we're going to do is actually push the pin all the way in and pull it all the way out. Now what that did is put a nice coat of grease inside here, evened out the grease on our pin. We're going to do the same on this side. Now what you want to make sure while doing this is that they move freely and don't bind up. And make sure that you have no issues going in and out with it. And then take it out and we can set this pin aside. Now we're ready to take this to the vehicle. So now we're ready to take our caliper bracket and reinstall it onto our knuckle. For us, we have two Phillips screws missing, so we're gonna have to hold our rotor back while we put our caliper bracket in place. Once we have our bracket in place, we can start to thread in our two bolts. All right, so once you have your top one started, Go ahead and work on your bottom one. Now these bolts are going to be 19 millimeters. We're going to snug these up before we torque them down. You may also notice that our rotor is very close here. Again, we're missing two screws, which would keep this nice and centered. But once the wheel goes on and everything gets tightened up, that issue will go away. Ideally, you have your two screws in place on your rotor. All right, so we've got these two snugged up. We're going to come in here. We're going to torque these down 
to 110 foot-pounds. So now we're just about ready to install our caliper, but our caliper pistons are out a little bit further than we need them to be. So our old brake pads were a little thinner, so our caliper pistons were out a little further. We're going to be putting in new pads, which means it's going to take up more space, so we have to press our pistons back in. We're going to use a tool to do that. You can use a C-clamp and an old pad if you decide to. But what you want to do here is get your pistons compressed so they're flat back here. All right, so this tool is going to press those pistons in. All right, so we have our pistons compressed all the way in. We can go ahead and release our tool now. And now we're ready to put our caliper onto our caliper bracket. But first, let's put our brake pads on. All right, so we're going to start by installing our pads on the inside. I'm just going to set them in that metal hardware channel and press in towards the rotor. We'll do the same thing on the outside. And we'll squeeze them into the rotor. Once we have our pads in place, we can then bring our caliper back into position. So now we're going to take our caliper off the hanger. Again, while doing this, make sure you're not twisting your brake hose. What we're going to need to do here is squeeze in our rubber or our boot on the bottom side. Now the bottom is going to be a little difficult because that boot is pretty large. So what we'll do here is just pull it a little bit towards us to give us a little bit more room to work with here so we can get our pin through without catching that boot. And if you remember on the top side, we have a boot that isn't right for this vehicle, so it's not already in there. We're going to have to compress it and put it in place. Again, center it so you don't catch it with the pin. And in this specific vehicle, the larger of the two pins is going to go in the top. And we can twist that in place just to hold our caliper. Now we can take the smaller of the two pins and locate that. Again, just be careful you're not pinching your boot in there. And thread that into place. We can twist them both or thread them both in place by hand and we'll come back and torque them down. So on our bottom caliper bolt here, I'm going to tighten that down. So we're going to snug up both of these bolts, then we'll come back and torque it down. Move to the top. And once we get the top one snugged up, we'll stay right there. We're going to torque both of these down to 85 foot-pounds. So now that we've pushed your pistons back, which means you've moved your brake fluid back in the line, what you're going to want to do is get in the vehicle, start your vehicle, pump your brakes a few times. You want that pedal to come back nice and hard. If the pedal is soft and goes right to the floor, what you're going to want to do is come down to your caliper, open your brake bleeder. It's going to be an 8 millimeter bleeder screw. Go ahead and crack open your bleeder screw. And what you're going to look for is fluid to come out at a nice, even stream with no air bubbles, no pops, no sprays, no foam. Just a nice, even stream of fluid with no breaks in it. Once you get that, you can go ahead, close up your bleeder screw. Hold 
hop back in the vehicle, give it another try with your brakes. What you're looking for is a nice firm pedal. You're going to do this and repeat this until you get that nice firm pedal. What I like to do at the end here is now that you've introduced some fluid here, we're going to grab some brake clean and just clean the area where your fluid, your brake fluid was. We'll dry it up. What this will help do is identify any leaks around this area that you still have, letting you know you have to come back and tighten it down a little more. Once you're done with that, head up top to your brake fluid. Make sure that your reservoir is full and topped off. If you do need any more fluid, go ahead and add it. So now we're lowered down to the ground because we're going to use a pry bar between our studs or our lugs to stop our wheel from spinning or to stop our hub from spinning. Before we torque our axle nut down, we're actually going to take it back off, put a little bit of oil on the back side, and then we'll torque it down. So again, this is a 35 millimeter. Alright, so we have our axle nut. Again, we're going to put just a little bit of oil right here, put it back on, torque it down. To speed up this process, we're going to use the impact. And now we'll come back and we're going to torque this nut down 202 foot pounds. Go ahead and put our wheel back on. And what I'll do here is I'll put a top and a bottom lug nut on and I'll rock the rim back and forth onto that rotor face, try and get it as flush as possible on the back. And then I'll continue with the rest of the lug nuts. Once we have our lug nuts in, we'll come in and snug these down. We'll lower the vehicle on the ground so the wheel won't spin and we'll torque them down. Now with the vehicle on the ground, we're gonna go ahead and torque down our lug nuts. We're gonna do that in a crisscross pattern. We're gonna to torque it down to 85 foot pounds. After finishing this installation, it's important to have an alignment done on your vehicle. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.